Okay, this is now uh, turn two of game number three for Frostgrave, and this is a, a third solo game that I'm playing. It's called Ishar's a Weapon Shop, or Ishar, I don't really know how to pronounce that, but uh, this is the game, this is the situation thus far. Okay, now the objective to this scenario is to have figures, one figure here, next to this uh, little green marker and that's a magical lock another figure uh, over there right they cannot be involved in combat and just stay adjacent to there and then this cabinet is gonna spit out its treasure and those magical locks will, will then um, open up and that treasure those treasure markers will be placed in front of the cabinet there and there's a fight that's starting here in the middle two gnolls and a hyena and we have a fight here between my dark elf she warrior and two gnolls all right let's get to it folks game number three turn two wizards phase all right so i want to move my wizard out of there uh, he's not in combat with that gnoll knight yet so there's still time. So Zephyr is going to move out of there. Let's see, that'll put him right next to my apprentice. So he's going to move his six inches right about there. I'll just, mm, maybe a little bit more this way. There we go. Okay, so there's my apprentice. There's my wizard. He's moving slightly away from the combat. Um, and let my archer take that shot later. Well, I don't know if he'll get the chance. The gnolls move first. The gnoll knights move on the first creature phase. So, uh, hmm. okay, he's going to try a spell. And he's going to try the push spell, which is... Uh, not of his school of magic and he gets a penalty I believe of plus four all right so I'm gonna check the stats and roll okay uh, upon further thought um, push the push spells really not gonna get me anywhere with that null knight so I'm just gonna use glow uh, which makes the most sense because then um, it will give my archer a plus three Okay, and my uh, wizard succeeds at the casting roll of 10. Uh, he rolled a 14. So I'm just going to put that uh, little fire marker there near the knoll to indicate that he is glowing. Okay, that ends the wizard phase. On to creature phase 1. Okay, creature phase 1 is uh, only these knights. All the other creatures move on phase 2. Um, so... As thought, this knoll is going to move to, uh, towards the archer with one, one action. And right there. And he attacks my elf archer. Okay, the glowing knoll won the fight with an 18. Uh, minus my armor of 11. And that gives me 7 points of damage. Alright. There it is. My archer has seven points of damage. I believe he only has ten armor also. Okay, apprentice phase. The creature phase one has ended and now we are in the apprentice phase. My apprentice is going to cast a spell called Wizard's Eye. And let's see, that is within 12 inches. And it is within line of sight, I think. So I'm going to cast it. Now he is an apprentice, so he has minus two casting to the roll and a plus two uh, penalty to the actual base roll of the spell. So I'm going to place the wizard's eye uh, right here on this top box. And now um, I can draw line of sight from the wizard's eye instead of from the actual figure. And uh, that's only for my spell casters. And that is also uh, permanent for the rest of the game. 
Okay, and with his next action, my uh, apprentice is going to move through that rough ground. So, he's going to stop right here. Okay, and that's my apprentice's position this time. And there's a knoll on that spawn point. Creature phase two. Uh, all the other knolls can now move and attack. So, he is within line of sight of my apprentice. And so he's going to move into base contact with my apprentice. Yikes. Whoops. Okay. So, let's roll a... Combat roll now. Okay. Now for the combat roll, plus two, plus two, both figures, apprentice and knoll. So that is a four. Yes, and that is an 18. Awesome. Okay, so the knoll lost the fight, and uh, now he gets 10 points of damage. His armor is 10. However, my apprentice is using a staff, and that is minus one damage, so the knoll is barely alive with nine points of damage. Okay, and there's that badly wounded Noel. Good job, Apprentice. Oh. Okay, so the hyena now moves into base-to-base -base contact with my war doggy. And there he is, and war doggy and hyena are fighting. So let's make a roll. Okay, next two nose, and this is creature phase two. This is creature phase number two. Um, let's see. Do a little measurement here with the stick. These sticks are really handy, folks, uh, in, in crowded areas. Uh, okay. Um, he's going to be able to move in base to base contact with Doggy, and he's going to have a supporting figure. Uh, poor War Doggy. Oh, no. Okay, so the Null Thug. That was a Null Thug that moved uh, into my dog, and he has a plus two fight. And a plus two bonus because there is a friendly figure in base contact with mine. So, plus four in total against my plus one. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, poor war doggy. And that was a 20, which is double damage. It is a critical hit. A very sad day for puppy. A very sad day. All right, War Doggy is out of the picture. Oh, okay. Well, I'll have to roll a uh, a post game roll for Doggy to see if he really died. Okay, so that knoll turns towards my treasure hunter, but of course he has all of his actions complete, and so now we go to the second knoll, and just gonna measure right around here. Just put them where he can stand best. And there they go. All these enemies are approaching the treasure hunter. Okay, and there is Evalia, my new man at arms or female at arms. And uh, those two gnolls are attacking her. She's fighting with them. They do have uh, only a few points left. So let's see. This is creature phase two continuing. So the gnoll here attacks her. And let's see if she can destroy that knoll. Okay, the knoll loses a fight uh, despite his uh, buddy's bonus. And so he takes eight points of damage, which is enough to take him out. Good job, Evalia. One knoll okay, left. Okay, and this was the roll for Evalia and the knoll. <laughs> they both had a one. So, uh, yeah, it's a miss. So, Evalia has won the fight against the attacking Noel, but the uh, numbers were so low that he doesn't take any damage. Okay, and I just want to make another point um, before I move on, and that is that normally you do push figures uh, an inch backward, and that's uh, at the discretion of the winner. If the winner wants to push the figure an inch back, uh, then that works. Um, that is especially fun when the opposing figure is on a ledge and you push it an inch over the ledge. Uh, but in this case, I'm, it, it's an optional thing and so I'm not 
usually don't uh, push figures an inch away. Uh, but maybe I should start doing that. Creature Phase 2 is now over. And so we are going to the Soldier Phase. Okay, my treasure hunter sees the uh, Knolls coming and she's going to make a dash for it. Um, she's going to move her 6 inches. There's a little bit of rough ground there. So I'm going to move her just about here. And then with her next action, she is going a half move more. And that puts her right near that spawn point. I hope nothing spawns there. But she is making a run for that magic lock. And there she is. Okay, Valia now fights the knoll. Uh, he is wounded. So let's see what she scores. Okay, so Valia is plus three and versus the knoll thug, which is plus two. And he rolls a 9 for an 11. She rolls a 10 for a 13. So, of course, she won the fight. Uh, okay, this knoll damage. takes more damage. Three points of damage. And so here is the total of 7. And he is wounded. But not quite dead yet. They have armor 10. Okay, and being that she is the winner of the combat, I think at this point I am going to use the inch uh, rule. Push him back a little bit. Okay, and she is going to use her next action to make a full move away from the knoll. And that's because she is kind of falling behind, and I'd rather keep the band together. So she's going to make another full move after she pushed that knoll away right up here, um, right next to Zephyr, supporting the wizard. And there she is. Okay, and next, my Ice Elf Archer fights at minus one against that knoll. He's fighting with a dagger. And here is the roll, and that knoll rolled an 18 plus five because that is a knoll knight. And, <laughs> oh well, Archer. So 23 is that knight's uh, score. I only have armor 10, so it's goodbye, Archer. Maybe Zephyr shouldn't have left him alone. Okay, and that was the end of my soldier phase. And that is the end of turn two. I roll a spawning roll uh, to see where one knoll appears. Um, and let's see what that number is. And that is a four. So he appears way over here. And we're going to get a regular thug figure. And put... Whoop, that's not a thug, that's an archer. Here we go. All right. Okay, and that is the end of turn two. We're moving on to turn three. And this is the situation. There is a null thug spawning out of that point. A very wounded knoll here. We have Evalia, who's my dark elf, right here. My wizard Zephyr, right here. This knoll just took out my archer right here, but he is wounded. That is a knoll knight. My apprentice is battling, it looks like, with another knoll who is just about dead. He has nine, nine wounds. And we have hyena here and two knoll thugs that just took out my war puppy and my treasure hunter is right over here heading for that magical lock. I don't know. It's not looking too good now. I was starting really well, and now things are beginning to change in the favor of my enemies. And that was turn two, folks. Now going to turn three.